If you want to learn how to become a professor in the field of philosophy, stay with me. Hi, and welcome to howtobecomeaprofessor.com, the web show to learn from proven professors and experts. I'm your host, Stefan, and today you will learn how Professor Joshua Cohen, professor at Stanford, would plan his career in the field of philosophy today. Professor Joshua Cohen is Martha Sutton Weeks Professor of Ethics in Society and Professor of Political Science, Philosophy and Law at Stanford University. Professor Cohen is also program leader for the program on global justice at the Freeman's Buckley Institute for International Studies, where he is a principal investigator in the program on liberation technology. Professor Joshua Cohen was previously a professor of political science and philosophy at MIT. He was educated at Yale University and Harvard University, where he earned his PhD under the direction of John Rawls. He has been elected fellow in eight honorary societies and has more than 10 teaching awards for his work and was the summa cum laude of the Pi Beta Kappa, an American acad academic honor society. Pol a political theorist trained in philosophy with a special interest in issues that lie at the intersection of democratic norms and institutions. He has written extensively on issues of democratic theory, particularly deliberative democracy and its implications for personal liberty, freedom of expressions, religious freedom and political equality, and serves as co-editor of the Boston Review, Review, a bi-monthly magazine of political, cultural and literary ideas. Among his recent publications are Philosophy, Politics, Democracy, Rousseau, A Free Community of Equals and The Arc of the Moral Universe and other essays. Last but not least, for 2012 and 2013, Professor Cohen is on leave working as a member of the faculty of Apple University. Professor Joshua Cohen, thank you very much for taking your time for this interview. It's a very big honor to have you here with us. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. The very first question I'd like to ask you is, how would you plan your career in the field of philosophy today from a BA degree to tenure? Is it, if it's possible, please be as specific as you can. Um, I have a little bit of trouble with the question, how would you plan your career? Right. Because, um, you know, I think philosophy is one of those subjects that you go into because you really feel like that's what you have to do. You can't do anything else. Right. And um, so you do, I think, what you, you go into it if there are some questions that really are burning for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you pursue those questions. And uh, so I, I don't, I think pl kind of planning your career can come into conflict with that. Mm -hmm. or, or you're worried about, you know, how the work is going to be received and how you're going to, um, I don't think you should plan it and plan on getting, you just do it because you got to do it. That's my, I, I, that's not very helpful advice. I know that. <laughs> I know that but that's the advice that I give to everybody. The basic advice is right. um, you've got one life. This is what I, I tell students. I'm not just saying this. You, you got one life. You should do stuff that really animates you, that gets you up every day, that you feel like you can't do anything other than that. And then you hope that things work out. But planning it, I, I don't have any good advice about planning it. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I don't you know. can ask me further questions about it, that if you'd like, and I could answer more specific things. I just don't feel comfortable with the idea of somebody going into philosophy and planning their career right right i mean then um then yeah. instead maybe you could share with us how uh when when did you make when did you make the conscious decision of um yeah of doing philosophy and yeah. uh, doing research in the field of yeah. philosophy so 
I, I decided, I think, my sophomore year in college uh, that I wanted to study philosophy and get a PhD in philosophy and become a philosophy professor. And it was partly because there were a few people around who were then graduate students. I was an undergraduate at Yale, as you mentioned. And there were a few people around who I thought were really interesting people. They were getting PhDs in philosophy. And I thought, hmm, that seems like a pretty good thing to do and a uh, compelling thing to do. And also, I think, this may be hindsight, but I think, I thought at the time, um, there are a lot of things that I'm interested in. And do it, getting a PhD in philosophy and becoming a philosophy professor looked like a way of creating opportunities to pursue the different things that I was in, interested in. It, it was not a, a, it wasn't really a focusing decision like, okay, I'm going to do this rather than that. It was like a flaring decision. It was like, I'll go into philosophy and then I can pursue whatever interests me as a philosopher. I right. think that's how I thought about it at the time. And that is actually how it's worked out. All right. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so have you have you made a conscious decision to become a philosophy professor or did it just happen? No, I, I, I as I said, I think in my sophomore year in college. Right, okay. Uh, I thought that's that, what I want to do. And I never as far as I remember, again, I'm I'm talking about, you know, 40 years ago. But as far as I remember, once I made that decision, I I didn't look back. I right. didn't And I didn't think, well, maybe I should, you know, just, that's what I was going to do. Okay. And, um, I, I, but to your earlier question about planning, okay, <laughs> I didn't think, okay, well, now if I'm going to become a philosophy professor and go to, what do I need to do to get into the best graduate school or, you know, I just thought, okay, I'm going to become a philosophy professor. Now I'm going to take a bunch of philosophy courses and learn more about philosophy and, you know, do it as well as I can. And, you know, so there was, was there, I, I, you know, as I said, 40 years distance, I may be misremembering. I don't recall um, a kind of career planning step by step. I better right. do this first to do that next. Here's the goal. Here's the meeting. I didn't think about it that way. I did. I, I've always done what interests me. Right. Right. Okay. That's perfect. That this answer is good enough. <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a little bit scared to ask you the second question, but I'm I'm doing it anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are, in your opinion, the most relevant journals to submit your original work to, and yeah. which are the most relevant conferences to attend in the field of philosophy? So, um, uh, I can see why you're worried about asking the question. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to answer it uh, without uh, deepening your concern. So, first of all, I, I, I should mention um, two background facts. Number one, I work in political philosophy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never published anything in philosophy outside of political philosophy. So my, you know, knowledge is principally about philosophy, uh, political philosophy journals. Uh -huh. Secondly, from the beginning, you mentioned uh, before that I taught at MIT. So my appointment at MIT was half in political science. And in fact, I was chair of the political science department at MIT for eight years. And Uh, and it's also half in political science at Stanford. So I've always um, had, you know, one foot and one academic foot outside of philosophy. Right. So that if you put those things together, I have limited expertise to answer your question. That said, mm -hmm. uh, in political philosophy, I think it's still true that um, the most important journal uh, 
the one where you want to get your work published is philosophy and public affairs. There are others that are, you know, excellent. The, the journal Ethics is a very good, and also there's more in moral philosophy in, uh, in, in ethics, and it's also a bigger journal. Um, the Journal of Political Philosophy is a newer journal, and it, it's uh, very good in philosophy. More broadly, um, the Journal of Philosophy is a leading journal, uh, the Philosophical Review, also a leading journal. And then it depends on, uh, I think, things branch out in terms of you know, what your specialization is where, and, and what your style of writing is. Philosophy is it may vary depending on whether you're writing in philosophy of mind and or in uh, philosophy of language, and it may also vary depending on whether you have a, you're writing about the history of philosophy. So things d differ a lot, but I, I think in political philosophy, I feel more confident about my, my judgments, and in philosophy broadly, journal philosophy, uh, school review, I think are still remain uh, uh, leading uh, journals. Um, Conferences, um, uh, the Eastern Division meeting of the American Philosophical Association is the major uh, discipline-wide meeting in philosophy. And if you're, if you want to hear new stuff in a variety of fields and um, meet people, that's, I, I think that remains the place to go. But I should say, you're not going to be surprised by this, but I don't like to go to conferences that much. Okay. And I should also say, you know, just to, uh, on the issue about uh, journal publication, mo I, 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 I mentioned philosophy and public affairs. I, I was actually an associate editor there for about, a dozen years, and I also pub have published a, a number of my main papers in uh, philosophy of public affairs. So there may be something very self-serving about my saying that that's the leading term. But I think that's a, a more objective answer. But truth in advertising. Already sure. okay. Thank you so much. You were quite specific and actionable on that question. Thank you so much for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've reached. You mean unlike the first question where I just <laughs> no, no, that's that's off. not what I meant. But um, the first, the the answer to the first question was rather inspirational, I would say. So yeah. um, also very valuable. Um, yeah, we've reached the third and final question, which is, um, and I guess I know the answer to this question already. How have you been able to maintain? such a high level of motivation and discipline throughout your entire career. And you know, I'm especially interested in the question, how can young scholars avoid the feeling of overwhelm or the feeling not being smart enough along the way or overcoming that feeling? Um, The motivation answer, you're right, you can predict it from what I said in response to the first question. The way, speaking for myself, the way I keep up a high level of motivation for the things that I do is I only do things that I'm highly motivated to do. I mean, that's not quite right. You know, you, you're in a field, you're in a department, there are responsibilities to come with it. And I think it's very important to, to take on those responsibilities. I mentioned I was you know, I chair of a department for political science for eight years. I was also chair of MIT philosophy for a few years. Uh, that's, a, everybody's got to do that. And, you know, it's an important thing to do. It's a responsibility to, the, to your colleagues and to the field. But on, in terms of the, you know, the writing and the work, I just think to say again what I said before, you know, you got one shot. Mm -hmm. You do what you love. Right. And if you don't love what you're doing, don't change what you love, change what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, the other question about how do you overcome the feeling of not being smart enough or you know, good enough, um, 
I don't know how to answer that. I think, uh, you know, having a little, uh, I mean, one thing is that almost everybody, you should, it's, it's worth being aware that almost everybody thinks that they're not really good enough or smart enough. And, and also, um, you know, I, as you mentioned before, I had the you know, great privilege pleasure, fantastic to uh, work with John Rawls and get to know him very well. He became a friend, as well as my teacher. And um, I, I never, I don't think, maybe this is twenty twenty hindsight also, but I never thought, I'm going to do what John Rawls did. I thought, I can do something that's good, that's worth doing, that'll make a contribution. But I didn't have a feeling of inadequacy relative to that ambition because I thought, you know, this is a very unusual person and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to do what he did. Right. So, um, and I didn't feel bad about that. I thought I could, there were lots of ways to make a contribution that were not of a, at the level of uh, role. So in some ways, uh, working with somebody who was at that level of extraordinary distinction and depth and originality and also a fantastically modest person. But somebody, I thought, you know, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I also, I, you know, when I was uh, started teaching at MIT, uh, I was a colleague with uh, Noam Chomsky. You talk to Chomsky, you think, oh, I see, he's different from me. Like he's, you know, <laughs> you know, a genius. Uh, I'm not, so knowing a couple of people like that, it makes you think, okay, I can do something. I can make a contribution, but I, you know, they're at a level that, you know, there's something that, that they've got going that I'm not going to be able to do with. So it's a matter of, or, so the answer I guess I'm giving is that the way to avoid having that feeling is, you know, to love what you're doing and then orient yourself in terms of a, you know, sort of a fair appraisal of your own abilities. I mean, I also am probably pretty arrogant, so maybe that helps me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Professor Cohen, thank you so much. I'm, I'm trying to wrap this very philo ph philosophical interview. Um, so the first main lesson I can draw from this interview is that uh, it's really important to do what you love. And mm -hmm. we only have one shot in life and don't waste your life doing something that you don't love, right? In the words of Steve Jobs. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, in the second part, you, you got uh, very specific and you recommended uh, the most relevant journals and conferences yeah. for the broad field of philosophy and also for this specific subfield, political philosophy. Yeah. And uh, last... Lastly, um, yeah, again, you, you shared with us that each of us, each of us as a scholar, we have to uh, um, contribute something original and walk our own path. Yeah. Okay, um, Professor Joshua Cohen, really, I really appreciate your um, very inspirational um, insights and thank you for taking your time and sharing your rich experience and wisdom with the Online School for Unconventional Academics. And um, yeah, we learned a lot of actionable and specific steps from you. And uh, I'm sure that many of our users will put them into practice. And uh, as always, I'd like to end my interview with following quote, the best advice is worth nothing if it's not put into practice. All right, <laughs> Professor Cohen. Thanks, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate your taking the time. <laughs> <laughs>